Good evening. Good evening and welcome to Joy News uh, on the News at 8 on the Joy News channel on Multi TV. My name is Israel Lai. Coming up in this edition, President John Mahama addresses 67th UN General Assembly, assuring international community of his commitment to free, fair and transparent elections in December. We'll travel to Daho in the Ashanti region where residents feel threatened by an uncollected heap of garbage. Producer price inflation for August is 16.6%, representing a decrease of 2.4 percentage points. Rap doctor Ochiame Kwame prepares grounds for Mr. Versatile show to position him as an all-round performer. In our very first story, President Jomahama has addressed the 67th UN General Assembly. His address centered on the dynamics of world politics, governance, and youth development in Africa. President Mahama also affirmed his commitment to a free, fair, and transparent election in December, inviting the international community to come and observe. Addressing the 67th UN General Assembly, President Mahama assured the world that Ghana will not be the base of any resources or weapons that will be used to disrupt the peace and development of any nation. Touching on security, he told the gathering that the security situation in Ivory Coast and Mali are of particular concern to Ghana. The unfolding tensions in Cote d'Ivoire and Mali have been and continue to be of particular concern to us. Let me state that Ghana will not allow its territory to be used to destabilize any other nation. We will not harbor any individuals or groups whose intent is to utilize Ghana as a base of operation to undermine the safety and security of our neighbors. We will work under the ECOWAS protocol and utilize whatever other tools of diplomacy are at our disposal to ensure that security and peace are established in Mali and Cote d'Ivoire. President Mahama made reference to the United Nations Human Development Index to buttress his point that Ghana has made strides in a number of areas with the aim of improving the living conditions of the citizenry. Ghana is on track to achieve a good number of the targets set under the Millennium Development Goals. Unemployment is a challenge that exists on a global scale. Nearly all nations, be they developed or developing, are grappling with finding ways to tackle this potential threat to social and economic stability. In Ghana, we are attempting to deal with this problem as aggressively and as effectively as possible by finding solutions that are long-term and sustainable. This includes a program we will launch to encourage young people to become entrepreneurs, owning their own businesses, and through that, becoming employers rather than employees. On the December post, President Mahama in his address emphasized that when it comes to transparency in electoral exercise, Ghana is held up as an example of excellence. He assured the international community that the election will be free, fair and peaceful. We're just a few weeks away from conducting our sixth successive presidential and parliamentary elections. As president, I wish to assure the international community that this election too will be free, fair, and peaceful. I am so certain of our stability through this process that I wish to extend a warm welcome to any individual or any organization that would like to come and monitor these elections. This commitment to peace that I have pledged in the past and I'm pledging anew today is in keeping with a long-standing tradition that Ghana has established domestically and internationally. On youth empowerment, President Mahama noted that Ghana is supporting the youth to ensure that they will not be left out in the fast-changing global economic, educational and social priorities. 
Back home, Parliament today adopted the Committee on Lands and Forestry's report of the annual report of the Administrator of School Lands, OASL, for 2009. It comes in the wake of recent land disputes across the country. The report was presented to Parliament in February 2012 and was referred to the Committee on Lands and Forestry in accordance with Order 177 of the Standing Orders of the House for further deliberations in pursuant to Section 14 of the OASL Act 1994, Act 481. The major functions of OASL is to consult with schools and other traditional authorities on matters relating to the administration and development of school lands and settlement of land boundaries, among others. According to the financial statement of the report, revenue mobilization dropped in 2009 as against that of 2008. A total amount of 13 million. 418,934 Ghana cities, 32 pesos, was accrued in 2009 as against that of 14 million, 76 Ghana cities, 50 pesos in 2008. In lieu of the land disputes and mismanagement of stool lands, the Drafting Committee on Legislative Instruments is drafting an ally to give the OASL the mandate to prosecute individuals and institutions that violate the laws governing stool lands and forestry. In seconding the motion, members commended the committee for a good job done but urged the Drafting Committee to ensure the ally is drafted in time to keep the violence associated with stool lands. In a related development, the Minister of Tourism, in commemoration of World Tourism Day, which falls tomorrow, September 27, urged members of the House to work closely with the Ministry of Tourism, Metropolitan, Municipal and District Assemblies, traditional authorities, the private sector and other stakeholders to mobilize requisite funding for the development of historical and cultural sites as well as natural products across the country. She also urged stakeholders across the world to do more in ensuring a brighter energy efficient world. Striking garment pharmacists have finally resumed work in full following the commencement of the National Labor Commission's compulsory arbitration between the group and the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission. The pharmacists who have been striking for the past three weeks over their migration onto the single spine salary structure are hopeful their grievances will be addressed once and for all. Chairman of the Government and Hospital Pharmacist Association, Gospa Stephen Kokwe, told Joy News a decision to completely call off the strike will depend on the outcome and negotiation at the compulsory arbitration next Monday. Gospa says it has raised red flags over the unsatisfactory way the panel of the compulsory arbitration handled similar issues brought before it last year. According to Stephen Kokwe, the Compulsory Arbitration Committee was unable to adequately address the group's concerns, rather referring GOSPA to a Grievances Review Committee, which was yet to be established then. They are calling us again for a compulsory arbitration on the same issue, the great structure and the market premium. And so we want to ask them this time around what is next. And that is, has been one of our concerns. We don't know how the law interprets this, whether you can have a compulsory arbitration on the same issue for the second time. Gospa expects its grievances to be resolved permanently to bring an end to the recurring impasse related to their migration onto the single spine salary structure. Teachers of the Usu Presbyterian Senior High School have embarked on a strike demanding the removal of the headmistress, Diana Denise Welbeck. They say the presence of the headmistress does not provide a conducive atmosphere for teaching and learning. The headmistress must go, else no teaching. GES, we need a report. We need change now. And autocracy must end now. Are some inscriptions on placards that have been mounted at the entrance of the Presby Senior High School, Osu. Since school reopened on the 17th of September, Osu Presec has not seen any effective teaching as teachers have refused to teach until the headmistress of the school is removed from office for various reasons. At the time of our visit on Wednesday afternoon, some teachers were clad in red protesting the slow pace at which authorities are addressing their issues. They needed to constitute an investigation into the matter. So they did that. We are asking for the report to be released. We are asking that the headmistress, either she leaves or we all leave. Uh, we have uh, used all democratic uh, means to get the issue resolved. 
but we are not getting any uh, results. The teachers accused the headmistress has been assaulting them both verbally and physically in the presence of students. Even when you want to go and see the headmistress, you have to go and join a queue, sign visitors' book before you'll be allowed to blast them, for instance. Um, there was a teacher that um, she, 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 she even slapped him, a guy, a teacher, a, a young guy, and the headmistress slapped the teacher in the school. It's the case is even at Osu police station. There is high rate of uh, teacher uh, 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 turnover. Teachers leave when they come here. They, 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 they condu the environment is not very conducive for teaching and learning to take place. If she has a problem against you, she doesn't mind, you know, actually, you know, even writing to the metro office or the directorate you know, regional office or whatever, for your salary to be blocked or whatever. And you have no option than to leave the school. The students have also decided to embark on strike if their teachers do not return to the classroom by Friday. Most students were gathered in groups on the school compound, whilst others stayed in classrooms. It's getting to two weeks. No teaching. We, the students, are neutral people. What we want is that we have come to school. A teacher should come to the class and teach us. We are going to write the same paper with... Legon Presec, other schools, they are far, 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 far ahead of us. We are really suffering. We need a move. I can't pay my school fees and just be standing outside just because teachers are not teaching. Moreover, my parents are suffering to pay my school fees. They've made it. I've paid my school fees, so I need to be taught in the classroom. The accused headmistress, Dinah Dennis Wilbeck, was not present at the time of our visit. While the Presby Educational Unit of the Ghana Education Service said both the manager and her assistant are indisposed and cannot comment on the matter. We're hoping to get to speak to the headmistress, uh, who is at the center of it all, Dinah Denise Welbeck. She had agreed to speak to us, but has subsequently changed her mind. She says the sector minister has intervened and has invited her for a meeting. It is until after that meeting that she would speak to the media. Now, if you have been suspicious about the way the Electricity Company of Ghana is going about the ongoing load shedding exercise, your suspicions may be well-founded. ECG says it has had to review the schedule because the power available for distribution to homes and businesses, especially during the day, has reduced. Consumers under the previous schedule would be without power twice every three days, once during the day with the other outage at night. Join users, as I have learned, more areas will be included in the daytime outages under the new yet-to-be-released timetable. Senior Public Relations Officer at the Accra West Branch of ECG, Eric Asante, confirmed the intensification of the load shedding program. We were made aware that the load that we have to shed at a particular point in time was supposed to take care of that schedule we brought out. Currently, um, that particular arrangement is not helping us. The generation cannot meet the demand even though we were shedding load on that particular um, lines. He explained the amount of electricity generated now is not enough to go around. When our box suppliers ask us to shed load or reduce a particular megawatts, uh, there's nothing you can do, there's little you can do because that is what is available to them and that is what they can supply. So we have made new arrangements um, to take care of the new situation. So letting our customers go through this um, particular problems is not anything good to write home about and I believe um, the stakeholders involved are um, aware about this and they will do all they can to make sure um, this problem is solved once and for all. The new schedule, according to Mr. Asante, should be out in the newspapers from tomorrow. But customers who have always had their suspicions tell Joy News the lack of electricity can be very frustrating. It's terrible because at times for three, four days we don't have light in our home. It's not only the load shedding. Uh, for almost a month now, I'm living around Kaswa. A month now, our tap is not flowing. So I think any time they put off light, it affects. So we are in a very terrible situation. You. Yeah, it's very frustrating because sometimes maybe you shop or you know, you've cooked, you put it in the fridge and before you realize the, the food will get bad and to be wasted, you can't use it. And you have to spend another money to go and buy another stuff and cook again. Yesterday I'm going to the home, the light is switched off, but I don't know why. 
the whole thing that uh, the cow, uh, the power switches now. Now this morning, early morning six o'clock, the, the light go off. Oh, before I want to see, it come back again. Now she say no, my fridge is off, but I don't know the reason. So now I want let the government to know that uh, the power switches now. Therefore, no, therefore try to do a maintenance on that, those things. At times you not get iron too. I mean iron your clothes and then at times to we students if you want to learn you wouldn't have the power to learn so it's really affecting us. Yeah, I normally go for class five and then close at nine and then I have to do um, this in uh, night um, studying. Because of this I can't study sometimes I feel frustrated like I don't, I don't know what to do so I have to wait for the next morning before maybe I can do what I'm supposed to do yesterday. So it really um, affected me a lot. Today, for instance, we had a lot of things to do at school, but because of the light, nothing went up. This other customer, however, appears to be in a world of his own and postulates his own theory about what prompted the current load shedding. I see it as cool because I learned they are doing some other stuff perhaps that's the more reason why it always go off and coming. So we're still praying that everything goes on well and we still have the normal lighting. The current outages have been prompted by the shutdown of the Sunon Asogli power plant after the West African gas pipeline, which supplies it with its fuel, was damaged. You know, why do I have the feeling that the last guy who spoke uh, sounds like a PR agent for ECG elsewhere? A heap of garbage in Daho, a community in the Mampo municipality, is giving residents there a lot of grief. The residents say the refuse dump, which, grown, which has grown consistently over the last three years, is a threat to their health and are calling on the appropriate authority to act now. Mahmoud Mohamed Nouroudin's report. Sanitation and water are at the core of achieving all the MDGs, yet they receive little attention compared to other sectors. Currently, Ghana spends 85 million US dollars on malaria treatment alone annually due to poor sanitation in the country. Disposal of refuse, fecal sludge, and uncollected heap of garbage in Daho is affecting residents' health at an alarming rate. For over three years now, this heap of garbage has not been discharged, creating unfavorable atmosphere for residents, especially those who live close to the site. While residents complain of having to battle with mosquitoes, they are also worried about the contaminated air they breathe. Residents say their drinking water and food are all contaminated. Ah. To make matters worse, this public toilet meant to serve about 2,000 people living in the Daho community is unsanitary, forcing people to defecate openly. Some residents spoke to Joy News. <laughs> Efforts by the news team to speak to the environmental health officer and some other officials at the municipal assembly on the situation and steps being taken to correct them proved futile as they declined to speak on the matter.